Welcome to the Weekly Lead. I'm Pastor Becky Tirabasi, and every week I want to encourage you to be a leader in your sphere of influence. Will you join me for this week's message? I have a special treat for you. I have a special guest with me who happens to also be with me in Washington, D.C. at the Lead House, which is a prayer and fellowship house for the members of Congress and staff and others. So we come here, I come more regularly than Roger to lead a prayer meeting with leaders. And you know I've been encouraging you to have a prayer meeting in your sphere of influence. Read the Bible daily, get a group text going, talk about what God is saying to you in your sphere, and then meet together weekly to pray. And I thought I would give you a peek at what we did this week while in Washington. And it was really taking quotes from classic authors on prayer, such as Andrew Murray. You all know he wrote that book, that famous book, Christ in the School of Prayer. And then quotes from others like F.B. Meyer, who was a famous pastor and a prolific writer, and even prayers from A.B. Simpson, the founder of Christian Missionary and Alliance Churches. So I hope you're encouraged today. You might want to use these very quotes for your prayer meeting this week. The first one, and then I've asked Roger to kind of comment, is by an author named Wesley Duell, who is really and historian in many ways, and talks about uh, revival from at least three different centuries. And so you get the picture that not every region or nation or city um, or, uh, or generation had a similar revival. It was different in, in different places, but there was never a doubt in Wesley Duell's mind, or really in any of these authors' minds, that prayer was the key factor, the most important source of power with God and others. Some, like Wesley Duell, was kind of, well, I would say in your face, but he was probably just being honest with his peers when he wrote this. He said, only a fool fails to pray, but millions of Christians seem almost greater fools. They believe in prayer. They pray rather casually and often ineffectively, but they have never given themselves to the work of spiritual conquest through prevailing prayer. In fact, his book is called Mighty Prevailing Prayer, and I encourage everyone I know to get the book. He said, knowing God's power is always released through prayer. They nevertheless fail to pray until they prevail. In other words, he writes, where are the Christian leaders who can teach the modern saints to pray? Only those who prevail in prayer produce a host of followers who know how to prevail. Roger, do you have any comments on prevailing prayer or that particular quote? I think there are a lot of misconceptions when it comes to prayer because, frankly, I don't know that many Christian people really dive deep into reading all of the scriptures about prayer. And so we have sometimes this minimal sense that, well, I just, God hears my prayers. And so since God hears my prayer, and there are a few verses that talk a little bit about uh, he knows our thoughts, you know, even before, you know, we express our f- words and so forth. So, well, since God knows everything, uh, you know, my, you know, really deep need for prayer is minimized. And really, when we read the scriptures on prayer and really take a deeper dive into them, we realize, oh, my goodness, Uh, the importance of prevailing prayer, the importance of continuing prayer, not just a one time, well, I had faith and I believe in God knows, but to continually pray until we see the results of our prayer, I think has been not really preached much or taught much. That leads into my next quote. 
E.M. Bounds said this, we're to press the matter not with vain repetitions, but with urgent repetitions. We repeat not to count the times, but to gain the answer. We cannot quit praying because heart and soul are in it. We press our pleas because we have to have them or die. That's very interesting. Well, you know, and here's the other concept on prayer is I think it's connected to spiritual warfare. I think it's connected to the fact that there are powers that have to be torn down in order for success to be uh, experienced in various levels. And so sometimes prayer is a is just a spiritual warfare exercise of wearing down the enemy until we see the breakthrough. Now, I would say in Washington, D.C., it does feel like spiritual warfare in terms of prevailing, importunate, intercession. You can't really give up and you don't see a lot of breakthrough initially because it's like a big, big, big wall. Mm -hmm. And you've got to really come after it. A.B. Simpson was another quote I read this week that leads right into what you said. Do you truly know the power of our supernatural weapon of prayer? God is looking not for great people, but for people who will dare to prove the greatness of their God. Yeah, you know, I think the other side of this is we're just, we're doers. By nature, we're doers. And so when prayer is something that we, you know, don't see um, like we, you know, you put immediate something results. away, immediate results, you don't see it. And so consequently, I think it's easy to miss the, to not, you know, not be reminded that what is going on when I'm praying is very, very significant and mm. things are being done by prayer. I may even not be doing it. My doing is the praying. Sometimes we think the doing is other things. We're like Martha, you know, and Martha's doing in the kitchen and Mary's right at the feet of Jesus. And I think that's another one of those pictures that we've got to be at the feet of Jesus praying and uh, really battling our tendency to be doers. That, that reminds me of the quote I often give at um, business events. The people who pray most mm -hmm. accomplish most. And Leonard Ravenhill said that. And it it shocks people because they don't think of prayer as action. And often people say to me, you know, you have to pray and act. I'm thinking, what do you think prayer is? <laughs> it is a great action. I'm going to close with this Andrew Murray quote, and you seem to be leading me right in to each of my quotes. He said this, in your prayers above everything else, beware of limiting God not only through unbelief, but also by thinking you know exactly what God can do. Learn to expect the unexpected beyond all that you ask or think. And that's, again, by Andrew Murray. So each time he says you intercede through prayer, first be quiet and worship God in his glory. Think of what he can do, how he delights in Christ his Son and of your place in him, then expect great things. Any thoughts on that one, Raj? Well, I love the Psalm 5-3 where David says, in the morning I lay my requests out to you and then I wait expectantly. And I think that's the connection. When we pray, we don't just pray like, okay, God, do, but we pray expecting God to answer our prayer. I think it's a key, um, a key line in terms of the effectiveness of prayer is based on our expectations. I want to encourage you, start your own prayer meeting once a week with your sphere of influence. That's Psalm 5-3 that Roger just uh, shared with you was from this week's daily Bible reading. We read a psalm every day in the Change Your Life Daily Bible, and the group around the table at the Lead House in Washington, D.C., we all read the Bible together, and there's a reason. God speaks, and you don't want to miss hearing his voice. And at the same time, the best way, the most powerful weapon you have in combating the things in your life 
is prayer. Don't, don't forget it. Don't limit God. Expect when you pray and share that enthusiasm with your friends. Amen. Amen. (laughs) I hope you've been encouraged by this message and I hope you join me weekly for the weekly lead podcast. Meanwhile, follow me daily on Instagram. The link is in the bio with everything you need to become a weekly lead.